Hey there, Sabrina here. It's such a joy to see you. This message is five ways to guard your heart. This is something the Lord has been speaking to me about, and I really didn't understand what it meant to guard my heart. And so I've done a deep dive study into this, and I wanted to share that with you today because we're going into a time in the end times where guarding your heart is going to be essential especially with everything that's getting ready to happen. So if you want to pull your Bible out and follow along with me in this study, I will have the scripture references for you up here on the screen so you'll know where we are in the word at all times. Proverbs 4.23 tells us, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. And so when the Lord started speaking to me about guarding my heart, I first wanted to understand what the heart is. And he showed me that the heart is our soul. It's your mind, it's your will, and it's your emotions. And I'll take you through some scriptures briefly that demonstrate this. If you go to Matthew 9, 4, it says, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why are you thinking evil things in your hearts? So this shows that your thoughts, which is your mind, is considered a part of your heart. In Acts 11:23, it says, Who, when he arrived and saw the grace of God, rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain with the Lord with purpose of heart. The purpose is to decide strongly to do something, and that is your will. And so that is another part of your heart. In John 16, 22, it says, Therefore you also now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one can take your joy away from you. And rejoicing is related to our emotions. So that is what comprises your heart. It's your soul, which is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. So it's very important to guard your soul, because out of it flow all the issues of life. So the first way to guard your heart, we're going to go to Psalm 119, verse 10 through 12, and that reads, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. So here we're seeing that being in the word of God daily will keep you from sin. The more of God's word that you have in your heart, that you bring it into your soul, the less likely you are to sin, the easier it will be to overcome sin. It's really powerful, isn't it? I love this whole study. It really opened my eyes to so much. The second way to guard your heart is not to allow fear in. So we're going to go over to John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And there are so many times that we hear in the word of God, do not be afraid, do not be in fear. He tells us specifically, for I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy 1.7, I believe. And this is why. Fear, worry, and anxiety are not from the Lord. They're not. And if you want to hear some more examples of fear, they are being indecisive is another way that we get into fear. Being compromising. When you're willing to give up your moral standards just to fit in or be accepted, compromising is also another form of fear. When you begin to avoid reading the Bible or you avoid going into prayer with the Lord, this is another form of fear. Feeling unloved by God is another way that fear grips us. And the opposite of fear is faith. And the Word of God tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That is Romans 10, 17. So if you're battling with fear, the Word of God is the greatest weapon against it. The more you hear it, even if you're just listening to an audio Bible, hearing will help you to overcome that fear. The third way to guard your heart is to stay in joy. Proverbs 17.22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. 
the joy of the Lord is our strength. If we are allowing the enemy to steal our joy, we're allowing him to steal our strength. If we go over to Proverbs 12, 25, it reads, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. So when you have a spirit of heaviness in your heart, it brings your heart down. And what's the greatest way to combat this? Worship. Worship will usher in joy like you've never experienced before. If you're dealing with a spirit of heaviness, if you're dealing with sadness, if you're dealing with grief, whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever is stealing your joy, worship will bring it back because worship ushers in the presence of God. And sadness and all of those emotions that we feel outside of joy cannot stand in the presence of God. They just can't. Another way that you can receive joy is through fasting and prayer. I know it doesn't seem like it, but when you fast and pray, you are seeking after spiritual things. And the fruits of the Spirit, which you can reference in Galatians 5.22, will manifest in you when you have a fasting and prayer lifestyle. Now, fasting and prayer, we could do a whole other teaching on that. It's not always doing water fasts. If you're someone who can't water fast, you can also do the Daniel fast. You can also abstain from certain things like meat or dairy or sugar. So when you sacrifice something for a closer relationship with God, he will honor that and he will reward you with spiritual blessings. The fourth way to guard your heart is to guard your tongue, which is the hardest thing to do. It really is. If we go to Matthew 15, 18 through 20, it reads, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. It's all right there. We have to be so careful with the words that we speak. And it's not just curse words or mean words. People seem to think that that's what that really means, but you can be cursing yourself and not even realize it. Sometimes when you just say simple phrases like, I'm so sick and tired, or this is killing me. Lord, I rebuke all these word curses right now in the name of Jesus. These things will manifest in the spiritual realm and they give the enemy an open door to come and attack you. And so a lot of the times the things that we're dealing with are from things that we have spoken over ourselves or things that we have agreed with unknowingly. And the more that you begin to pour negativity out, it's going to continue to defile your heart until you learn how to reverse it and begin speaking God's word. Because you'll notice that God's words are not negative. They are not filled with death. They are the opposite. They're filled with life. So if you're having trouble controlling your tongue, the best thing I can tell you is to make it a game Every day, find yourself speaking word curses. Find yourself speaking words of death and reverse it. You can always reverse. You can say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus and then speak the opposite and begin to train your tongue to speak as God would speak and not as the enemy would speak. And then finally, the fifth way to guard your heart is to remove sorrow and anger. This is from Ecclesiastes 11.10. Therefore, remove sorrow and anger from your heart and put away pain from your body for childhood and the prime of life are fleeting. So sorrow and anger can also go in and defile your heart, which is why the word of God tells us, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You really shouldn't be going to bed every day without forgiving everyone who has hurt you that day. This is a practice that I have put into place and making sure that your heart is pure before you rest your head on the pillow that night. I forgive everyone who hurt me. I forgive all those who cursed me today. I forgive all those who hated me today and just release it to God and give it to him. Make sure that stuff doesn't sit in your heart because the longer it sits there, the greater likelihood chance a root of bitterness can begin to form. And if we go over to Matthew 12, 34, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And that is so true. You will know people by their fruits, by the things that they speak, by the words that they say. 
and we first have to examine ourselves. Are the words that we are speaking filled with kindness? Are they filled with love? So when you know what to look for, when you're aware of the signs, when you begin to understand how the heart can be defiled, and it can be defiled so easily. I mean, you just heard in that list of five things, all the different ways that a heart can be defiled. The more aware you are of it, the better likelihood chance you are of catching these things before they get in and a root of bitterness begins to spring up because a root of bitterness really does defile a pure heart. And unforgiveness is one of the greatest ways that the enemy uses to attack our hearts. And when your heart is defiled, it's not pure before the Lord and it can block a lot of blessings that God has for you. It can even keep you stagnant and delayed, spiritually speaking, and in the natural realm. So unforgiveness is very important to let go of. That's another way that your heart can become defiled. And it's not even for the person who did the wrong act towards you. It's for you. It's for your heart. It's to set you free. And I wish more people understood how powerful forgiveness is and how necessary it is to our walk with Christ because Jesus didn't hold on to unforgiveness. He let it go. He walked in forgiveness and love, but he also set boundaries. And if you missed my video on Jesus did this, but no one talks about it, please go watch it because it's all about boundaries and how to guard your heart in that way too. Boundaries is another way that you can guard your heart. And so many of us neglect setting boundaries for ourselves. So I hope that this has blessed you today. I speak love, peace, and joy into you and into your home, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.